As you can see, the focus is very important in observation. Because you can't see my face now, but now you can. Welcome. In this lecture on observational focus, I would like to use the work of James Bradley. It's rather classic. It's 1980 he wrote it, but he shows us very explicitly and very clearly how we can use observation and how we can build a focus into our observation. And he does this by using four or three steps. I will explain it. First, he says you have to start with descriptive observations. The second step is focused observations. And the third step is selective observations. So what you do here is to create a funnel. Or to put it in another way, you start with a bird's eye view, a view from a plane. Then you start driving around in the area so you can see the area from your car. Thirdly, you start cycling, maybe not so fast as this lady, but a little bit less fast than driving this car. So you start funneling, you start looking and noticing other stuff. And in the end, you start walking and then you can go back to certain points. You can stop more easily and test some ideas. So in general, this is how you funnel. But how does this work more specifically? Well. Let's start with the descriptive observations, the first part of Spreadley's scheme. What you want to do with these op descriptive observations is a general description. You would like to create a general description of a certain group, area, or whatever you study. And Spreadley makes a distinction between two versions, the Grand Tour and the Mini Tour. And you do this in order to create some broad characteristics early on in your research. So, how does this work? Well, the suggestion is that you can use nine different dimensions of social situations. You can describe a social situation using nine dimensions. And these are the, the, the dimensions Spreadley suggests. Space, actor, activity, object, act, event, time, goal and feeling. And if you think that you can use only five of those nine dimensions, it's perfectly fine. I think. And if you can make up some, some other dimensions as well and you end up with 15 dimensions, for me it's fine as well because you start broadly and you start looking at different aspects of a social situation, for instance. Now, Spreadley makes a distinction between two types of tours. A grand tour, that's the bird's eye view, where you start with a broad description of a social situation using one of those nine dimensions. For instance, space. Let's say you do a research like Mitchell Dunier did on, on the sidewalk, then the space is the sidewalk. And you look at booksellers on this sidewalk. And it's an urban issue. It's a, probably for, for policymakers, it might be an urban problem because people are selling books, secondhand books, on the street and maybe some ur urban planners do not want them to sell those books. So it's a social issue, maybe a social problem, and you give a broad description how urban planners think about this, how this sidewalk plays a role. Then the second step is the mini tour. And in this mini tour, you focus a little bit more. You start describing how actors on this space work, act. So. What you do is you combine two dimensions. And I can also show you a, a matrix. And in this matrix, you have these nine dimensions. And there you are. And you can combine them. So you can describe the activity on the sidewalk. You can describe the books that are sold and how they are sold. You can describe um, the actors over time. How do they act in the morning? How do they act during the afternoon? Or do actors change? Some sellers sell in the morning, probably. Others sell during the afternoon or in the evening. So you can make different descriptive observations. Now then you start. The second step in observation, according to Spradley, is focused observation. And in this focused observation, you step away from your car, you step onto a bike, and you start watching more specifically. You try to answer your research question. You try to deepen your interest as a research. You try to 
to continue on serendipitous finding, you found something that was really striking, how these men talk to customers. And you think, oh, I have to really look into that. So you probably start creating taxonomies, how these men talk to women versus men, or how they talk to potential clients versus people that are surely not buying, but they comment about. And obviously, this is later on during the research. The last type of observation is a selective uh, observation. It's the last part of the funnel. It's where you start walking instead of riding or driving. And this part of observation is even more focused, and it's focused on comparisons and nuances. For instance, looking for more evidence or contrary evidence, and especially this contrary evidence is important. See how some people act this way, but others act in another way. And you have to find, start find, finding examples and triangulate with probably other material. Maybe there are some documents, someone else did observation, or maybe you have done some interviews or conversations with people. And what are these, the outcomes of a selective observation? Well, again, taxonomies, categories, and links. In this phase, they are tested. So the relations are tested, the taxonomies are tested, because you've looked for contrary evidence. And when you do this, well, again, in the end of the study. Now, is this old-fashioned work of Spreadley the only work? No, obviously not. There are quite some others that have published about creating a funnel into um, more focus in research. And a good example is the work by DeWalt and DeWalt. And, and they suggest that you start with the descriptive part by looking at what ha what's happening and why is this happening? What is regular in it and what is unique or what is unusual? And in the second step, you start looking for variation and exceptions. So how does it vary? Can we find some contrary evidence? And then the third step is, well, you have to find more examples, more specific examples, probably similar situations elsewhere, or systematic observation in order to, to probably generalize a bit and maybe to look at, over, uh, at change over time. So again, this is some type of funnel. And probably there are some other ways of funneling as well. But creating focus is extremely important in observation.